Today's episode is sponsored by no one, bitch. All right, I'll let you in on a little industry secret. Kemir 400 is pretty good, better than you might think. It may just even be the best thing ever grown in the lab besides, well, me as a baby. Back when Kemir was announced in 120, I naively shot a roll at box speed. And well, yeah, it was flat as f since then, honestly, I didn't really have too much of an interest in Kempmere. I mean, Ilford HP5 pushed two stops to 1600, was always quite a banger, so I never really felt like I needed to uproot that. But then one day in the UK, just outside the walls of Harman itself, I loaded up some more Kempmere 400 in a brazen act of apathy. I decided to push it two stops and see what I get. Who knows? Life is all about taking little risks, like taking out a second mortgage on your house because you're feeling lucky in Vegas. Anyway, to my surprise, the pushed two stop photos were no longer flat and looked a lot better better as perhaps one would expect by pushing any you know flatter profile film so yeah no real news there but i started thinking these pushed two stop photos still look like they retained quite a bit of information overall they weren't totally nuked yet even after the push so i had a jimmy neutron brain blast of epic proportions and i asked myself what would happen if i pushed this out into the world or the toilet with an extra stop so three stops it's quite wild who pushes any film stock three stops certainly not well-adjusted members of society who care about money so that's what today's video is about how catastrophically can you just absolutely f up this film stock and still bring it back from the edge on location as per usual at the assortment of random abandoned buildings i slammed some frothy dripping and juicy ass swag kentmere 400 into my rizmaster 7. Since the objective here was to push the cam here three stops, I'd be setting the light meter to 3200 ISO, which is quite up there in terms of film speeds. Literally, its only competitor in 120, at least, is Delta 3200. Either way, you shouldn't really load these high ISO stocks in direct sunlight, but f it. If I cared about light at all, well, I'd be a competent photographer. Same shit, different day. Same abandoned buildings. <laughs> As I headed inside in the Ash Chief Mountain, which we would call this building for the time being for no reason at all, I started to wonder about Kentmere's place in this world. Let's speed run it because a lot of people out there are already familiar with Kentmere, but some aren't. It's really just kind of seen as a budget black and white film stock. It's 400 ISO and it contains significantly less silver than other pro line film stocks like FP4 and um, HP5. That's just how they keep the price down from my own understanding. One down. This floor does not seem very stable. There is a 100 ISO version as well, which seems to behave somewhat different than this 400 version, but we ain't about that shit today. The toilet. Oh, there's two toilets. Camera 400 also maybe doesn't have an anti halation layer. Not super sure about that one, but these shots certainly would lead me to believe it's not there, or at least has been significantly reduced. Great, now that we're all caught up and I'm rocking my new and improved film photography power stance, how are these shots looking? Pretty good, if you ask me. There's certainly contrast, but it's not totally unworkable. In fact, it looks quite nice, I think. The shadows roll off elegantly and we aren't losing too many details here and there. It's quite surprising, to be honest. Sorry, but the angle is right where you need to be. Oh. I took a photo. You might not have seen it, but it, it happened. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The fact that Harman calls Campmere 400 a 400 speed film to your face without laughing is clinically psychotic. Somehow, as I've done here, you can literally underexpose this film three stops and then put it into a deep fryer filled with developer, give it a shimmy and a squeeze, let it cry, burn it, let it swim, and somehow, some way, it will give you photos regardless of 
how much you f***ed it up. It makes no sense at all to me. They say Camir overall has reduced latitude. I think the reason being because it has less silver, but I don't know, man. It's pretty solid. I think most would absolutely not be able to tell the difference. The grain, even on these totally nuked photos, is pretty controlled overall, surprisingly. I honestly expected more grain on something like this that's been chemically squeezed half to hell for an image. Oh. Sweet. There's a pentagram on the floor in this room. <sighs> The lighting is pretty nice. This shot is uh, it's quite good. The tones are nice and dramatic, and it's certainly approved by Satan, so it might be one for the portfolio. shooting black and white. Everything just looks good right now, you know? Let's keep looking. there's a huge penis. Do you want to shoot the 43 or no? Yeah, I'll take it. Fuck it. Switching to the 43. Let's do another quick clean pass with the uh, 43 millimeter and uh, see what we get. It is a little bit of a slower lens, but it doesn't matter because I got 3200 ISO film in the camera right now. Hope it looks good. Right. So is Camier pushed to 3200 a viable thing going forward for me? Yeah, absolutely, I think so. I like the look of Kentmere at both 1600 and 3200, so the flexibility there is kinda nice to have. Next time I roll up on location with a fat bag of Kentmere 400, I can just decide on the spot if I need that extra artificial stop of light, or if I should just leave it at a two-stop push. Both results look fantastic to me. At 3200, Kentmere might even be somewhat cleaner, you know, grain-wise, than Delta 3200. I can't believe I'm saying that, but here's some Delta, and here's the Kentmere for comparison. All right, I haven't been in these buildings yet, so let's check it out. Yep, peni everywhere. Now I guess the real question is, is Kentmere cheaper than Ilford Delta 3200? It depends on a few factors, but yeah, in general for me, it is. $575 for Kentmere and $10 for Delta 3200. If your lab charges you to push your film, then it might kind of even out in the end. I use the darkroom to develop this kind of stuff and they just charge a one-time flat fee of $2 to push your roll of film however many stops you want, which is still even a little bit cheaper than Delta 3200 in my case. All right, I'm back at the uh, 
giant wiener. Let's see if we can get this shot. 43 might be a little wide, so let's not get our hopes up. Definitely gonna have to paint out that ding dong too. Well, that's probably the end of the video. Uh, the end of the test, which is ultimately what it was. I don't know, I think we get the idea. It either worked or it didn't work, right? So I'll cut back to future Jason now. So in conclusion, Kentmere 400 pushed three stops to 3200 is definitely a better choice overall for high speed black and white film. Delta 3200 might inch it out in terms of latitude, but honestly, most of the time that doesn't really matter to me. I never really ever saw a huge discrepancy between the two anyway, and you know, lost so much detail that I steroid rage flip my desk over or anything. But that's mostly because my arms are noodles and I can't lift anything heavy. That's why I shoot with the Mamiya 7. Overall, very surprising results that the cheaper film stock can actually spar with the legends. So from here on out, I'm ditching the personas of HP5 Ho, T-Max Troglodyte, and Delta Doggy to simply adopt the prestigious label of Kentmere Cum.